The Studio Display is without question one of the most divisive Apple products I've ever reviewed. I've been using it solidly for one month and I have many thoughts. I love it when Apple launches fascinating products, particularly when they are deeply flawed. Don't get me wrong, I also love it when they release insanely great products that deliver the perfect solution for the intended use, but those products aren't quite as much fun to make videos about. The studio display is classic Apple, undeniably good looking, brilliantly functional, but obnoxiously overpriced. I've been using my studio display for about a month now, and I've learnt five things. The first thing I've learned about the studio display is that you can actually get a fantastic panel from Apple. As much as I loved my 5K iMac, I was never overly satisfied with the screen. This might sound odd coming from someone who keeps lavishing praise on the 27 inch screen of that 5K iMac, but there are some inherent issues with Apple's quality control. For instance, my 2015 5K iMac suffered from slightly darkened corners and to be honest, quite bad screen uniformity, which is when you see certain dark spots across the screen. But I learned to look past those niggles and enjoy that vibrant, sharp, deeply colourful display that you get on the 5K iMac. However, I'm happy to report that the display on my studio display is actually damn near perfect. The screen uniformity is pretty much bang on across the entire panel and there's barely any light fall off in the corners like my 5K iMac. I just hope that this indicates that Apple's quality control is improving when it comes to displays. Fingers crossed. The second thing that I've learned about the studio display is that the webcam is terrible. Now, every initial review that came out about the studio display, including mine, lambasted that webcam, and rightly so. It's dreadful, and it's just completely out of place on a £1,500 monitor. But don't worry, said members of the hastily cobbled together Studio Display Supporters Club, which does exist, I can confirm. Reserve judgment until the software update arrives, they said. So I waited, I installed the software update, and it has made no measurable difference whatsoever. The only thing it does seem to have done is slightly improve the performance of center stage. So that is when you bring more than one person into the frame and the camera automatically pans out and catches both of you. That's a bit better after that update, but apart from that, the quality of that webcam is just dreadful. But the fact that that software update doesn't seem to have done anything at all does confirm my suspicions that we're not dealing with a software issue with this webcam. I think it's down to poor hardware. And on such an expensive monitor, that's really naughty. The third thing that I've learnt about the studio display is that nothing really compares. There are some wonderful alternatives to the studio display, including the Huawei Mate View, which my podcast co-host Rob gave a fantastic review of on a recent episode, which I'll link to in the description. Dell has some great options as well. There's that forthcoming M8 monitor from Samsung, which looks really interesting. There's just one issue, which is that none of those monitors offer the same amount of colour depth and sharpness, in my opinion, as the 5K panel that sits within the studio display. If you've never used a 5 5K iMac before, I can confirm that it pretty much ruins the experience of every monitor that you use after that. Everything just looks pale, soft, and just a bit dull by comparison. So if we put LG's flawed ultra-fine 5K display to one side, no one else makes a 5K monitor that is comparable to the Apple Studio Display. The fourth thing I've learned about the Apple Studio Display is that everyone can save themselves £400 or $400. They do it every time, don't they? Whenever Apple launches a new product, they have to put in some kind of optional extra that is just ridiculously priced. Whether it's the Mac Pro's wheels or the dreadful lightning to headphone jack that you can buy for the AirPods Max, Apple just seems to have to do this thing where they throw in this option that you perhaps need or you want, but it is just un deniably, unjustifiably expensive. The studio display comes with a tilt adjustable stand by default, or you can swap that out for a visa mount at no additional cost. But if you want tilt and height adjustability, you'll need to find an additional 400 pounds or $400. 400 pounds. What you get in return is the ability to move the monitor up and down on its stand, which you could do by placing the studio display on a monitor riser or on a couple of books or putting a cushion on your chair or just moving your standing desk up a bit further. What's worse is the fact that you'll probably only ever use that hinge once. At 400 pounds, it's just ridiculous. The fifth and final thing that I've learned about the studio display is that ProMotion isn't possible. So during my initial review of the studio display, I noted that the lack of ProMotion was a bit of a downer given how much I'm relying on that feature on my 16 inch MacBook Pro. And that wasn't always the case. When I first got the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I just wasn't that impressed with the ProMotion side of things. It didn't seem to be that evident, but 
Now I've got the studio display, I do miss it. However, as many, many people have pointed out on my initial review of the studio display, you simply can't run anything close to what ProMotion requires in terms of screen refresh rates over the existing Thunderbolt connectivity between the Mac and the 5K studio display. This will change. I think ProMotion will become a dominant feature of future standalone Apple displays, but I'd love to see what Apple's roadmap for that looks like. For instance, how far from reach is the technology required to make a variable refresh rate Apple branded 5K display at scale and at an acceptable price point? I don't know the answer, obviously, but I'd guess that it's not that far off at all. In fact, I think we'll see something in the next iteration of the Pro Display XDR, which will probably hit the shelves later this year. So I'm not denying that the Studio Display is an impressive piece of kit. You can't help but be impressed by it as soon as you walk into the room. The screen is, with hindsight, far more than just the 5K display ripped out of the iMac. Thanks to those extra 100 nits, it is noticeably brighter. And if my experience is anything to go by, I think Apple might be getting somewhere with quality control. However, I still cannot recommend this monitor to anyone but the most ardent of Apple fans. It's simply too expensive. And yet, there's an argument to say you're paying for the build quality and the quality of that screen. But it is a thin argument, and issues like the webcam, which is unforgivable, and just the pricing of that tilt slash height adjustable screen makes that £1,500 price tag really hard to swallow. I think Apple painted itself into a corner when it stopped making standalone displays in 2011, and then only to emerge several years later with a £6,000, $6,000 reference monitor. Where do you go from there? There is a place for it, 100%, and actually I am probably the target market. For this business, the cost of that studio display can largely be absorbed and justified, but if you're a hobbyist or someone who just wants a nice Apple display at home, it's not an easy purchase. So if you can afford the studio display and you can look past that horrible webcam, go for it. If you're on the fence, I'd wait until they start hitting the secondhand market or swallow your Apple fan pride and just opt for one of the brilliant 4K alternatives out there. Anyway, on to the Mac Studio, and if you keep watching, I will link to a recent video where I interviewed someone who's been using the Mac Studio for the last few weeks, and in fact, he sold his Mac Pro to fund a Mac Studio. Was that a mistake? Find out by clicking the link at the end of this video.